to Russia now, where on Monday, President Vladimir Putin denied allegations linking him to a luxurious property on the Black Sea coast. They were his first comments since mass protests erupted across the country over the weekend. The mansion was featured in a video investigation released by jailed Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny. The film called Putin's Palace went viral on Russian social media last week and has already been watched more than 90 million times. On Saturday, thousands of Russians took to the streets, braving police violence in what was a symbolic victory for Mr. Navalny. He has been in prison since mid-January after returning to Russia from Germany, where he spent five months recovering from nerve agent poisoning, something which he blames on the Russian president. Well, I'm joined now by Maria Pevchik from the Anti-Corruption Investigative Unit, the team behind the investigation. Maria, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, I'll get to the investigation in a moment. But first of all, over the weekend, we saw mass protests across Russia. And we really have seen uh, protests in the past. But can you tell me what makes these different? Um, well, I mean, the scale of it was definitely different. We haven't seen anything like that really ever probably uh, because we are talking about the so-called unauthorized and sanctioned um, process so the state has not authorized those people to go in the streets and um, so those people are risking well they're risking everything you know being arrested being beaten up and um, they still went and we're talking about um, 150 to 100,000 people of street um, it's in, in the streets of 120 different cities across Russia. So I think the scale of it is very different. Uh, you lead Mr. Navalny's investigative team. In fact, you were one of the authors behind Putin's uh, palace. Tell me why uh, you decided to put out uh, this particular investigation, the timing of it. Um, well, we decided to do that, I think, a day or two after Alexei regained conscious conscious after he was poisoned with uh, Novichok. I think he was still in the emergency room in the hospital ward when he said, OK, that's, that's what we're going to do next. Uh, we knew for sure, we were 100% confident um, who is about who is behind the poisoning. We knew that uh, an operation of such scale is impossible, um, really, uh, and it could only be done. Um, I'm, well, I guess, by direct order from Vladimir Putin. So we didn't really have any doubt um, about who's behind it. And we decided to do what we do best, an investigation about him personally, about his personal wealth, about his uh, palace that he had secretly built in Russia and um, the luxurious lifestyle that he's living for years. Yesterday, uh, we heard Mr. Putin uh, respond and, and, and say uh, that actually this palace is not mine. It doesn't belong to me. Were you surprised to hear that? Um, not really, because this is um, how he always responds. He says exactly the, the same thing about his daughters. Um, he denies the fact that two women who live in Russia and who uh, are also very, very wealthy, but he denies the fact that they are his daughters. He denies most obvious things that that everybody in the world understand are true he just says no that's not true like remember what happened with scribbles and with uh, two gru officers who um came to britain to poison scribbles vladimir putin denied that saying that these two were just tourists and um they were coming to salisbury to see the spire uh, I watched uh, the two-hour, almost two-hour documentary that, that you did. It was incredibly uh, detailed. You used drone footage. You were able to uh, put out the actual floor plan of, of the, the palace. Just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, pulling together all that information because it was incredibly detailed. Um, it took us some time, but um, to be honest, not as much time as, as everybody thinks. Um, the drone footage was a little bit more complex than than it is normally because they do have quite a high security. They have some anti-drone equipment, but again, it didn't really save them. And um, it took us four attempts to film it. But anyway, in, in any case, well, you see the footage is there. And in terms of uh, the floor plans and other and the interiors that you have mentioned, um, we've been kind of getting information about this for a very long time, for years. They have started a, a very large scale reconstruction um, project there maybe three years ago, four years ago, and thousands of people are working on it, you know, interior designers, um, just regularly the people who are with late tiles or I don't know, and or work on fresques on the walls or buy furniture. 
Um, and there are so many people that I think at some point it became impossible to contain the information about this palace. So we have been getting quite a lot of images of it and those floor plans and other documentation uh, with regards to that palace for, for a number of years. And what we've done this autumn is that we've just put it all together and um, made a coherent story. Um, I mean, millions, tens of millions of people have viewed this uh, now. Is that something that you found surprising to see the kind of response to this? Um, to be honest, yes. I probably should say that we expected it, but we definitely didn't. I don't think uh, we're now at about 92, 93 million views on YouTube. Um, I, I couldn't have foreseen it in my wildest dreams and I'm so happy and I'm so pleased that people like it, people watch it, people share it. Uh, it's 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 very rewarding and um, I just wish we've done it earlier, really. Uh, you earlier spoke about uh, Mr. Navalny and, and the nerve agent uh, attack on him. You actually uh, sounded the alarm uh, on that. You were you were the first person to say this could be the nerve agent Novichok. Uh, just tell me what happened. Um, well, it happens in um, during our trip this summer to Siberia. We were filming a couple of investigations there in Tomsk and Novosibirsk. And um, well, Alexei felt sick on the airplane. We well, well, the rest of the team stayed in Tomsk. And to be honest, we just figured out that a man of his age in a relatively good um, state of health, um, he exercises, he he runs, he um, he has no complaints with regards to his health cannot just fall into a coma randomly. So um, pretty much within, within minutes, we stormed into his room and tried to get uh, all kind of evidence that we can get from the hotel room from where he checked out earlier, assuming that it can be some sort of poisoning. And then a couple of week, weeks later, the um, German army uh, lab, the Bundeswehr lab, uh, found um, a trace of Novichok, the nerve agent, on um, one of the water bottles that we have taken from his room. Uh, Maria, I mean, as I said, you lead his investigative team. You also live with the threat of harassment and arrest. I mean, what is the end game here? Uh, well, the end game here is to remove Vladimir Putin from power. And what do you expect uh, the international community to do, uh, the Europeans, the United States? Um, with regards to what exactly uh it's... I suppose Mr. Navalny has now uh, been arrested. Uh, this documentary has come out. You're going to continue to do your investigations. Uh, do you expect just condemnations? Do you expect sanctions? Uh, we expect all sorts of supports. We're not being very hopeful. We are fully aware that we need to solve our internal Russian problems ourselves. ourselves and there is not going to be a someone that's some sort of magical person from outside who's going to come and uh, solve our problems. That's that's the battle that we are fighting in Russia. Uh, of course, we appreciate all, all sorts of support um, that uh, has been coming and uh, the, many world leaders have been uh, making their statements, many institutions um, have been um, expressing their concerns. Uh, there have been some sanctions um, imposed and I guess there will be more uh, because we're talking not only about Alexei Navalny himself, uh, an opposition leader, but we're also talking about Russia uh, running an underground chemical weapon program, um, which really shouldn't exist in 2021. You know, the program that they're using to target and to kill um, people who Vladimir Putin is unpleased with. Maria Pevchik, really fascinating talking to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here on the program.